Hey guys, I've been seeing this video go around on YouTube for a long time. I feel like it's kind of gotten resurrected over the recent past, but we are gonna be talking about what my makeup collection would look like if I wasn't a beauty YouTuber. And there are a few things I wanna mention uh, before we kind of get into specific products, because I do think this is a little bit more of like, like a conversational thing, because a lot of this is hypothetical, obviously, because I am a beauty YouTuber, but because I became a beauty YouTuber at a really interesting part in like my makeup life, it's interesting to be able to tell you like my makeup history or my history with makeup and where I think it would have gone even if I didn't get into beauty YouTube. So just a quick summary of my history with makeup. I always really, really was into makeup. I thought it was a lot of fun. I was always into like drawing and painting and it was kind of like an extension of that. Like my favorite thing to do in drawing was shading. So I really, really liked the idea of, of shading and of blending. And so I always just really enjoyed makeup. I loved actual makeup because it always reminded me of drawing or painting supplies. So in high school, I ended up with eczema. And for those of you out there with eczema, you know, it can be painful. It's really just generally very, very annoying. It's very unsightly. And the first thing anyone, any dermatologist will tell you to do is to not wear any makeup. So at that point, I just, you know, stopped playing with makeup, obviously. And I just kind of like suppressed my interest in makeup, even though I always loved looking at it. I loved going to the department stores and like looking at their displays and kind of like playing with stuff, but I never really got like really into it. So in college, after college, well into my 30s, I only occasionally purchased makeup. Um, I came across a few brands that I could use that didn't exacerbate the eczema. But once I hit my late 30s, early 40s, I noticed that my eczema just wasn't as bad. My skin just wasn't as reactive. And that's when I started getting kind of back into makeup. That's when I personally started to watch YouTube. So because of this kind of up and down history I've had with makeup, I know my makeup collection obviously would be a lot smaller <laughs> than what I have now. It would be a lot, lot smaller. But there are definitely a few types of makeup that I know I always really, really enjoyed. And then there are types of makeup that I never got into that I think I probably would have never gotten into, even being a viewer of YouTube. So this is like a secret of mine. So I never ever wore foundation. I wore foundation once and it was the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. And I purchased it once for like an event. I put it on, I remember quickly taking it off because I, there was no, I had no YouTube reference at that point. So I put the foundation on and it just looked like a mask and I didn't know what to do with it. So anyway, I don't think I would have any foundation in my collection. Um, I don't think I would have any mascara in my collection. You guys have heard me talk about how I am just, you know, my lashes are just kind of pathetic. They're short, they're uh, not very full at all. They don't really hold a curl. And so I've just, never paid any mind to my lashes. So I never ever wore mascara until I kind of started watching YouTube and thought about like starting a channel. So I don't think I'd have any foundation. I don't think I'd have any mascara. And the third thing I never ever used before I started watching YouTube and before I created my channel was powder. Definitely I would not have any loose powder. I do think maybe at this point in my life I would have maybe picked up a powder. So I'm just gonna start this off by saying, I think I would have the Charlotte Tilbury, uh, the Airbrush uh, Flawless Filter Powder in the shade one. I think I would have eventually picked up a powder. I think it would have been pressed. I don't think it would have been loose. Loose powder has always intrigued me because I think it always looks cool. They always have such beautiful packaging, but I never ever was able to work it properly and it would just seem very fussy to me. So I think I would have had this in my makeup collection. Now I mentioned I never had foundation, but what I did used to use was the Giorgio Armani, it was like a maestro eraser. So it was kind of like a concealer and it came in a little squeezy tube and it kind of had like a point tip applicator. It has been discontinued, but I do remember kind of like late in my thirties, I started putting that on just a little bit like underneath my eyes because I have like a little bit of discoloration and I looked tired and I wanted something just to kind of cover that up, just to kind of brighten my eye area. And I used to just dab that on and nothing else. <laughs> I thought that was good enough. So anyway, I do think I would have some concealer in my collection. That was always kind of like my go-to product in terms of base. So 
I don't know if I would have come across this if I wasn't a beauty YouTuber, but I do know I love this concealer and this is kind of like an all-in-one kind of base product for me. I can use it just to spot conceal. I can, you know, add it to more places on my face if I want to use it. Kind of like a like a spot foundation kind of situation. And I do have this on my face today. So I just have it around my eyes and just, you know, around the hyperpigmentation that I have along my jawline and a little bit around my nose. And I do feel like if I wasn't on YouTube, this would be like my base situation or something like this would be my base situation for the everyday. I think I've mentioned this uh, to you guys, uh, but one thing that I wanted to mention was way back in the 90s. So when I was in college, I became very, very enamored with Pat McGrath. I used to I used to want to be a fashion designer. I didn't go to school for it, but I used to want to be a fashion designer. So I was always like tearing sheets out of magazines of, you know, spreads that I liked. And every time I looked at the makeup artist credit, it was always Pat McGrath. And I was like, who is this woman? And you know, back then it wasn't easy to find information like this. It wasn't like I could go into Google and do a search for Pat McGrath, you know, makeup artist. So anyway, I just became very, very obsessed with her and I would look for her name. You know, I would get Vogue every month. I would get Harper's Bazaar every month and I would scour the pages and look for her name and just sort of keep an eye out for it and look at like the makeup that she was doing. And I remember coming across an article where Armani had come out with their makeup line and Pat McGrath was the creative director behind it. She's the one that started that makeup line. And I was like, what? And I remember running to, I'm trying to think of what store I ran to. I think it was Bloomingdale's. I was so excited when they showed me the fluid sheer. This is, I think, I, I know I'm wrong, but for me, this was like the first liquid highlighter ever. I had never seen anything like it. I was so intrigued. And I remember the makeup artist there put it on my face and he said, you know, you have to do like a three formation on the side of your cheek, you know, starting at your forehead over your cheek and then down around your jawline. And I was like, I'll take one. Like I bought a bottle immediately. I think I even purchased my very first like fancy brushes too, because he used an Armani brush on me. And do I still have that? Oh my God, here it is. <laughs> But here it is. Look at how crazy this brush looks. But this was like my first fancy makeup brush that I ever purchased from Armani. And they used to use natural hair and wow, this does not feel good anymore. But anyway, I went home with this fluid sheer, not this bottle, but um, fluid sheer in number two and some makeup brushes. I bought this one and I actually purchased this one too. This is from my archives, really old. Armani brush. Anyway, and I sat there and like put the number three on my face and I would have like no other makeup on and I would just be brushing the fluid sheer on my face. I just loved it. I loved it so much. So I do feel like I would still have a fluid sheer, like I do now, a fluid sheer in my collection because it's just, it's so nostalgic to me. I feel like even though I don't use this product that much anymore, I have other liquid highlights that I enjoy more, um, I would still always have like a bottle of this in my collection. And speaking of Pat McGrath, I do think I would probably have all of her products, maybe not to the extent that I have them now, but I feel like I would have picked up all of her eyeshadow palettes because I was so, so obsessed with her and like finding out who she was and just learning everything I could about her. And when I found out she was from London, I was like, I wanna go to London. I <laughs> was really, really enamored with her. So I do think I would have a lot of Pat McGrath in my collection. But like I said, I probably wouldn't have every single eyeshadow palette. Um, I probably wouldn't have quite as many lipsticks or lip glosses, but I know I would have picked up at least a couple of the Mothership palettes. Um, I've always been into packaging. I know that would have been really intriguing to me. I probably would have a couple of these like six pan palettes. Um, so that would definitely be in my collection as well. But back to liquid highlights, I think I would have probably picked up this Chanel. I really do like the look of this bottle. I feel like it looks like a little perfume bottle and I do really like this liquid highlight. So I think I would have had this in my collection as well for a lot of the same reasons as the Fluid Sheer. I just think it's such a cool product. I always love the idea of liquid highlighter. It's just, I don't know, it's just like one of those like cool products to me. And also in line with liquid highlighters, I think I probably would have come across this Victoria Beckham um, Augustinus Batter Cell Rejuvenating Priming Moisturizer. I think I would have just gotten the original color. I don't know that I would have run out and purchased the golden shade, which I do really love, but this is the original shade. It's what I have on my face today. And because it has that little bit of glint in there, because it's moisturizing and I've always had really dry, sensitive skin, I think I probably would have 
bitten the bullet and purchased this because I just feel like this kind of embodies a lot of the things that I've always liked in makeup. So I think I would have had that in my collection. Okay, and kind of going back to the Giorgio Armani Fluid Sheer situation, um, Armani was one of those brands that never you know, exacerbated my eczema. It never really brought it out and never aggravated it. So that was definitely a brand that I kind of kept going back to and like wanted to try more things from. So I remember going to the counter and just falling in love with how this bronzer made my skin look. Again, the makeup artist just kind of like brushed it on lightly and I was like, oh my God, you know, like all of a sudden I looked awake, <laughs> healthy and so i purchased this bronzer not this one that bronzer i actually panned surprisingly and i think they've discontinued this bronzer unfortunately but this is basically the bronzer that i just fell in love with and i think what's funny is this bronzer is pretty much a matte bronzer and since then because i've tried so many other bronzers i really like bronzers that have more of a sheen to it so maybe by now i'd have a bronzer with you know more sheen in it but i know i would definitely still have this one in my collection another product that i know i had one of i just can't remember the actual shade because I think it was a hand-me-down from one of my friend's older sisters. So she was like the cool older sister. And I used to go to her house during college. We would hang out. Her older sister, of course, was working. And so she had a proper like makeup bag and she had a Chanel blush. And I was like enamored with it. I loved the fact that it was like this round pan, that it was like domed. It just looked so, so cool. So I'm fairly certain I would definitely have a Chanel blush in my collection. And I picked out Jersey. It's what I have on my cheeks today because I think this is a color that I've always gravitated towards in terms of blush. Just something kind of nude either peach leaning or pink leaning, but something definitely like in the nude area. So definitely a Chanel blush would be in my collection. So the other makeup product that I always had in my collection because I could wear it. it never ever you know affected my eczema because it wasn't really like skin based is eyeliner I used to have this Shiseido dark brown coal eyeliner this is like back in like 1991 to 1995 I had this Shiseido eyeliner I think I went through maybe two or three of them all I did was just align my eyes and that was it because sometimes you know eyeshadow bothered my eyes and you know whatever other things but eyeliner never bothered my eczema. So I do think I would definitely have an eyeliner in my collection. And I picked up the Pat McGrath Blitz Brown eyeliner because I think I would have had a Pat McGrath eyeliner for sure. And I do like this Blitz Brown because it is a dark brown, but it has a little bit of metallic in it. And I actually have it in my waterline and um, I tight lined with it too. So definitely have an eyeliner in there. I probably would have more than one, but I just pulled this one out for this video. And then other than that, I feel like I would have picked up makeup along the way that just kind of really caught my eye. Makeup that caught my eye always kind of reminded me of artist supplies, like I was uh, telling you. So when it comes to like lip products, I never ever really liked opaque lip products. But because I have this YouTube channel and I've played with so many lip products, I am much more comfortable wearing like bold lip colors. But if I didn't have this channel, I do think I would have, you know, stuck with like sheerer lipsticks. And I always really liked lip products that came in kind of like a crayon or like a like a pencil for, well, let me just show you. So I think I probably would have picked up a Sicily um, Lafito Lip Twist. First of all, I do love animal prints, so that would have caught my eye. And I love lip products that are a crayon. So I did pick out this number seven shade because I always had a, a love for like orangey red tones. And being that this is a fairly sheer formula, I think I would have picked this up and just really, really worn it like all summer long. Like this would have been my lip product. So I think I would have had that in my arsenal. And then the other lip products that I think I would have gravitated towards are the Surratt Lip Slicks. So again, I just love this kind of like crayon style kind of lip product. And I have uh, one of these on my lips today. I have Club Sept on my lips today. And similar to the Sisley, these have like a very kind of glossy, moisturizing sort of formula, and they're a little bit sheer. They're not so much of a commitment. So I think I definitely would have had a few of these. The other color I picked out is the Nude de Soleil, which is another nude shade, but a little bit lighter than the Club Sept. So yeah, we have like a light nude and a deeper nude 
And then the other lip product that I just, I feel like would have definitely caught my eye is one of these Emile Corden lip balms. Now they have a few different varieties. They have a lot of different uh, flavors, but I think I would have picked up one of their tinted lip balms. And this is in Powdered Rose. And I know this packaging would have just completely sucked me in. So here is Powdered Rose. And the Emile Corden lip balm feels so good on the lips. It is definitely one of my favorite formulas. And then the slight tint in here, I think I would have just really, I mean, I do love, but I think, you know, even not being in the beauty space, I would have wanted to pick one of these up. Okay, let's talk about some cheek products. So again, kind of sticking with the theme that things that remind me of artist supplies <laughs> are things that I gravitated towards. So I remember one of the very first uh, products that I ever purchased at Sephora was a NARS multiple stick. I unfortunately don't have any, but I purchased the color Copacabana. Again, it had that like highlight quality, which I was always attracted to apparently. Um, and I just love that it, it was kind of like a big, like pastel stick that you again would use as an artist. So I do think I would have a bunch of like cream stick products in my collection, um, but I picked two out just kind of as an example. Um, but the Westman Atelier um, Baby Cheeks blush sticks, I think I would have had. Definitely this pop it color would have caught my eye. I mean, whose eye would this not catch? But I think I would have been very intrigued by this and probably picked this up. And I know I would have loved these Tom Ford dual ended like blush and highlight sticks. So this one is in Soleil Neige. So here is the blush side. And then I have the highlight side on my cheeks today. And I know I would have just loved this whole like dual ended like cream stick situation. So I feel like I probably have all of these in my makeup collection. And speaking of Tom Ford, I know I would have some of these cream and powder eye color uh, duos, the ones that have the cream eyeshadow at the bottom. And then when you flip the lid open, there's like a powder product in there. It's like a topper. So I actually have this on my eyes today and I know this would have caught my eye the packaging would have definitely caught my eye and I know like the idea of like a one swipe one color shadow look always appealed to me because again with my sensitive skin it wasn't like something I wanted to mess with I didn't want to sit there and blend and blend and like really irritate my eyelids so a product like this definitely definitely would be in my collection along with these Westman Atelier iPods. Th this alone would have gotten me. I probably wouldn't even need to know like what the colors were <laughs> inside, but I do love all the shades, this Tabak color especially. And just the fact that they're in these little pods and the packaging is just so beautiful. Yeah, I would have definitely picked these up along with I feel like one of the Westman Atelier um, super loaded tinted highlights. This is in the original Pot de Peche. I feel like I would have needed this in my life. You know, if I ever saw this at a beauty counter, I would be like, yes, I definitely need that. So this would be in my collection. And then I know I would have picked up some Lila B products. Again, this packaging would be irresistible to me. This is their cream highlight just swings open and it's really, really heavy. It's almost like a paperweight. And this cream highlight has like almost like a powdery feel to it. It's just really beautiful and like velvety feeling. So yeah, this would definitely be in my collection. This is what that Lila B highlight looks like, by the way, isn't that gorgeous? And I think I probably would have picked up one of these Divine Duo lip and cheek uh, tints. This is in Be Dazzling. They have a bunch of shades that I think I probably would have had, but the fact that this is like so, teeny tiny like look how small it is compared to the highlight i think i would have needed these you know just the packaging alone but i do love this product and this be dazzling shade is definitely what i would have gravitated towards because of that highlight quality and it's so pretty on the lip and it's really like a beautiful like creamy formula so, so there's this be dazzling isn't that pretty it has just like a little bit more pinkiness to it than the actual highlight. So I definitely would have had those. And then just two final products that I feel like I would have picked up because I just, I thought they looked cool and I would have, you know, needed to have them. Uh, one is the Victoria Beckham uh, Smoky Eye Brick. And I think I would have had to pick up this silk shade again because of all of the satin goodness and like the shimmery bits in there i think that would have just caught my eye and this last product is another product that i think just i don't know it just really appeals to my sensibilities but this tom ford um soleil contouring compact this is the very first one in the afternooner 
first of all, this packaging, yes, I would have been like, oh my God, like who doesn't want this big, gigantic, white and gold compact? And then when you open it up, it's just this beautiful palette. All the shades in here work for my skin tone really nicely. I just feel like this is something I would have really, really wanted to have. So I do feel like this would be in my collection as well. So that's it. That's sort of like a talk through of what I feel like my makeup collection would be like if I wasn't a beauty YouTuber. And I think my take on this video is a little bit different from others. I think a lot of people took the opportunity to talk about like their absolute favorites, which I think was awesome. It was so entertaining to watch, but I really wanted to like figure out what were the things that attracted me before I got into YouTube, before I would have played around with like hundreds and hundreds of different lipsticks. Like what were the things that always caught my eye and things that I gravitated towards? And also give you like a little peek into the history that I have with makeup and the things that have attracted me in the past. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next